I'm going thrifting at all of my local thrift stores for sneakers to find the best pairs possible and to see how much profit we can make in just one day thrifting. What if they're real? So the first place I'm stopping is one of my go-tos and that's Circle Thrift in Fishtown. Now the reason I like this place so much is because they've actually opened this like small secondary thrift store next to the main thrift store that sometimes has some crazy sneakers. In fact, in one of my previous videos I found this pair of LeBrons which goes for like $600. I also found a pair of Kobe's the time before that that went for like $300 and I grabbed all these pairs together for maybe like $250, $300. It's, it's pretty crazy so I always make sure to stop by because it's near my barber and uh, see what they have. Some Jordan 4s. Over right here it was like a kid size. 60. They don't look great. Yeah, I'm thinking these probably aren't good. Got some Nikes right here. Pretty nice. Toy Birch. That's about it. Got some Jordan 1 mids, which I'm good on, I think. Got some 13s over there in a kid size. That's about it in the case. Got some Air Max 90s here in like a pink and gray colorway. Pretty warm though, for 15. Got some Brooks. Oh, I remember these. These are the Adidas Shoe City somethings. I don't remember. I got like a couple pairs of these from Adidas like five years ago. I mean, they're comfy. And for 10 bucks, it's not a bad price. And then we also got the uh, ZX Flux um, Superstars. At least I think they are. Maybe they're just like a snakeskin version. I don't know. But nothing here I want to grab. So unfortunately nothing really I wanted to grab at Circle Thrift. There were those Air Jordan 4s, but I'm pretty sure that they were fake. Like I have a size 9 of those, um, those were a size 8, and they look nothing like each other. Like sometimes GS sizes look a little bit different than the regular sizes, but those 4s, those are some foo-foo fours, let me tell you so. So unfortunately, that's just how it goes sometimes. You don't always find great pairs of sneakers at the thrift. Sometimes you find nothing, and that was what happened at Circle Thrift today. In fact, to be fair, more often than not, you find nothing. I'm gonna continue on though and go down to Buffalo Exchange in Center City, Philadelphia, because that's one place that I can pretty much guarantee that I might not find the craziest hits ever, but I usually can find something that I can flip relatively easily for a decent profit. All right, so first thing is at Buffalo Exchange, we've got some Nike Air More Uptempos. For how much? 70 in a size 10. Looks like they're on sale. That's an option, definitely. Actually over here I'm seeing some Air Jordan 7s, some reverse Olympics for 50. This might be a pickup, let me check these guys out. All right, so these look like they're going for like 75 to 100, so I'm definitely grabbing these for 50. So the first pair that I pick up is this pair of Air Jordan 7 Tinker Alternates in the, I guess, Olympic colorway. So this shoe is really interesting because it's sort of a second edition of the Olympic Air Jordan 7s, one of the most iconic Air Jordan 7 colorways of all time. And I found this just sitting on the shelf at Buffalo Exchange for $50. Now, I've realized after buying the shoe that there are some issues on it, like there's some weird, like glitter lines all over it, which at first I thought were glue stains. Turns out those are actually like someone got a glitter pen and like outlined some parts of the shoe. Not a huge deal. I, I don't think it's that noticeable. And also I'll make sure to mention it whenever I sell this shoe. But uh, I think for $50, this is a great pickup. It's a size 12. And I think I could probably flip this for $90, which means that we could have a potential profit of $40. Hold up, up here I'm seeing something crazy. Is it what I think it is? Oh, satin fives. Not exactly what I was thinking. I was kind of hoping it was off-white fives. <laughs> well, I was getting so crazy about it. 75 for size nine. I, I just don't think that's worth it. It is cool to see them, but I know that they go for a little bit less than that on eBay. And like the heel is a little bit worn down. A little bit too much yellowing. So if they were cheaper, if they were like 40 bucks, I'd grab them, but not for that price. Also got some Nike Craters over here of some kind. Crater 004s or I don't know what they're called, 400s, I don't remember the name. But they want 36 in a size nine. It's actually not a bad price, but uh, I just don't think the market's there for these. Hold up, I think we got some Nike Dunks. Look at this, for how much? 45, I've never seen this colorway before. It's like black with like a orange swoosh that's kind of scraped down. Is it some sort of like special SB? Huh, I'm not sure. Let me check these guys out. I've actually never seen these before. So these are the Distressed Leather Nike Dunk High SBs. And uh, they're actually going for like 90 to 100, it looks like. So for 45, it's definitely a pickup. So this next shoe that I see, I'm actually really excited about, and that's because it's a pair of Nike SB Dunk Highs, which at the thrift store, you never find. And the reason for that is because Nike Dunks are just so incredibly popular right now, especially when they're SB Dunks. That just seems to be the magic word to make the shoe worth like 10 times more than a usual pair of Nike Dunk Highs. But I found this pair from 2015 called the Distressed Leather Nike SB Dunk Highs, and uh, it's in pretty good condition. I believe it's a size nine and a half, right? 
nine and a half. And even though this pair only has one set of laces and it's a mismatched set of laces and it also doesn't have a box or anything like that, I still think for $45, it's an absolute pickup, no question. And I really think I could probably flip this for like 90 to 100. Let's go with 90 just to be safe, which means we do have a potential profit of $45. So here we got some Jordan 1 mids in a size uh, 11 and a half for 70 bucks. Probably not worth it, but cool colorway. So I came over to the women's section, I'm seeing some Michigan Dunks. Look at that. That's crazy. I was seeing a lot of stuff, like you got the boost you wears and there's some Jordan 1s, but these may actually be worth the pick up for 50 bucks. Let me double check, but could definitely be worth it. Yep, definitely grabbing. So the dunk finds just keep on coming. I see a pair of Michigan Dunks in a women's size in the women's section. I believe it's a women's size eight and a half. And I'm like, wow, that's an incredibly clean pair of dunks in great condition for an insane price. So Buffalo Exchange has these shoes listed for $50. And because these shoes are in such great condition, even though they are a smaller size, they're a women's size, I still think I could flip these for like $90, which is a $40 profit. I'll be honest though, I wish this pair was in my size because this is a pair of dunks that I've wanted for a minute. I just haven't wanted to pull the trigger on it yet. Okay, so I don't know what to do here. Cause like, there's just no way. And I just don't want to spend $40 if they're not good. But at the same time, if I didn't spend the $40 and they were real, <laughs> no, there's no way. There's no way. Okay, well, is this stupid? Is this stupid? I'm not sure. All right, so I texted a bunch of people I know to find out if these are fake or legit. I know they're fake, but what if they were real? That'd be crazy. Okay, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna take them behind the counter. I'm gonna take them behind the counter. Might as well. So as I was about to leave, one of the employees came up to me and said that there was a pair of sneakers on the top of the shelf that I should definitely check out. And that sneaker was a size 14 pair of Air Force Ones that I had never seen before, ever. Now he had told me that they were from 2007 and my sneaker knowledge from 2007 isn't great, mainly because, you know, it's 2007, it's like 16 years ago. Regardless, it was dead stock and it was worth checking out. It had a little hang tag that was also still in a plastic bag, which is kind of crazy for a pair at 16 years old. There was also definitely some yellowing on the outsole and yellowing on the rest of the shoe, so it wasn't in perfect condition, but again, 16 years old. So I checked the SKU number for the shoe online and it turns out that it's the Rosie's Dry Goods Air Force One Low, again, from 2007. Now it says that it's also possibly the Supreme MCO, Rosie's Dry Goods. I couldn't find too much information about this release. I actually don't know anything about this release, so if you guys know, let me know in the comment section down below. But it was a pretty wild looking pair of Air Force Ones and they had it priced for just 65 bucks. Now there were no sold listings of this shoe on eBay, at least that I could find, at least not recently. However, there were two pairs listed on eBay, one for 140 and one for 190. And if you went on StockX, I believe the pair that they had was $800. But again, probably came with a box, probably was in better condition. But either way, not an easy shoe to find. Definitely one of the rarest sneakers that I found at the thrift store. So I grabbed it. Maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I should have. I'm not sure, it's a size 14. It's not the easiest size to move. But I've gotta say that it's a pretty interesting looking sneaker. Like the upper of the shoe comes with this almost like dinosaur or reptilian print. You've got this rose on the toe of the sneaker that Kind of looked like it was discoloration, but it's just the color of the rose. Like I said though, there is some discoloration on the shoe. The outsole of the shoe is kind of yellowing, even though it's brand new. I love the outsole though, it's got red and blue, it's very clean. And then you've also got this gray midsole with some inexplicable creasing in it. Again, I don't think the shoe was worn, so I'm not sure exactly why it's creased. And then the detail that was most interesting to me because it looked like it was pretty much brand new, I've got the lace tied around it, is this hang tag with the Rosie's Dry Goods logo on it, which I thought was pretty cool. It's a full metal hang tag too. Very quality. I mean, the sock line of the shoe is also leather, so is the insole. It feels like a very high quality pair of Air Force Ones. And for 65 bucks, I'm willing to take the risk. Now, as far as profit, I have no idea what we could sell this shoe for. I'm assuming around 100, 140. Let's go with 100 just to be safe. So with that, I mean, that's a $35 profit. Even if we just sell it for $100, there is a higher potential for profit if someone really knows what this shoe is, I think. But uh, let's just be safe. Say $35 profit to sell the shoe for $100. And uh, either way, it's cool to find a pair of sneakers from 2007 that's dead stock at the thrift store, or I guess at Buffalo Exchange. All right, that was crazy. Now, I do have one thing to say. I did not get the Paris Dunks because an employee told me that they were actually her Paris Dunks and they weren't real. So, good to confirm that but that would have been the craziest find, I think, on YouTube if they had been real. But they wouldn't have been there because everyone who works there apparently is a sneakerhead and knows all the sneakers that are in there. I just found that out today, so that was crazy. So Buffalo Exchange was awesome. I bought more pairs there today than I've bought in a really long time, and they were all profitable. I mean, that's kind of the goal, so that's, I wasn't gonna grab them if they weren't. But uh, the even better news is that Second Street is like two stores down, so let's hit it up and see if we find anything else. 
got these crazy Yeezys right here in green and blue. I've never actually seen this. That's not true. I've seen this color before. For 169. What size are they? Size 10. You know, I wouldn't actually be against it. I might grab that. Got some Stussies. Some Air Maxes, some Balenciagas too. Look at these. For 349. Got some women's infrareds for 109, size seven and a half. It's actually dope. Some Jordan 1s, some 11s. Okay, so this wall is a bunch of stuff today. We've got the Bodega New Balances for 79. We've got these Air Jordan 4 Cool Grays. I know those go for a decent amount. 299 is not bad. Size 10. If they're my size, I might have done it. But 299 is not terrible. Not bad. We've got some New Balance 995 for 129, size 10 and a half. We've got some Jordan 6s. What else? Ooh, these off whites right here are pretty crazy. For 99. That's not bad. That is not bad. And then these Jordan 13 Flints for 179. Not a bad price. Oh, and then Yeezys too. We got Yeezys over here. Yeezy, um, what are they? 350 Comforts. 350 V2 Comforts for 149. Comfort for 149. I don't know if you can put a price on it. Got some LeBrons over here for 59. Wow, that's a crazy price. They look almost brand new too. Let me check these guys out. Oh, definitely grabbing these. 100%. <laughs> no question. So I don't really know that much about LeBron sneakers. I mean, I guess I know more than like a non-sneaker head, but I don't know as much about LeBron sneakers as I do about Jordans or other brands. And uh, I don't usually check out LeBron shoes. However, I did see a pair of LeBron 7s for $59 that was in incredible condition. So I figured, you know what, while we're here, might as well check it out. I've got time to spare. It takes five seconds to type it in on eBay. Let's see what comes up. And to my surprise, there was a bunch of sold listings for around like $200 to $220. Now to be fair, these are complete sneakers like they come with the box they come with all the accessories all that sort of stuff this pair really just comes with a sneaker but at the same time 220 dollars for a 59 dollar pair of shoes not bad now i'm gonna be realistic i don't think i can sell this pair for 220 it's a size eight and a half which is a good size but not the most popular size and again it doesn't come with the box or any of the accessories i think i could probably sell this pair of shoes which is worn but not worn that heavily for like 120 dollars which means even still, we get a profit of $81, which is pretty insane for a pair of LeBrons. I haven't, actually that's not true. I just sold a pair of LeBrons that we picked up in a thrift video. I don't know what I'm talking about. But an $81 profit is an $81 profit. I don't know if it'll actually sell for that, but that's my guess. And I feel like it's worth picking up. And I wish it was a size nine, because if it didn't sell, I probably would keep it. We got the Adidas Addy Foam Quakes, or Qs, for 99. Good on those, some Pharrell's. Some other decent stuff, but nothing that I'm like too mind blown by yet. Got some really nice stained glass dunks right here for 99. I'm gonna check these guys out. I don't think they go for a lot, but might as well check them out. Well, we're grabbing these too, because they're going for a decent amount. So as I'm walking around the aisles at Second Street, I see this pair of Nike SB Dunk Highs. It's actually the Concepts Nike SB Dunk High stained glass. And it's a pair of shoes that uh, when it first released, I don't think was going for that much, but as time has gone on, as with most pairs of Nike SB Dunk Highs, the price has raised. Now there's actually a Concepts in New York City, but I believe the store was first founded in Boston, and I think the stained glass has something to do with all the churches in Boston. Let me know in the comment section if I'm completely off base about that, but that's what I think it's based off of. And I've gotta say, it's a pretty clean looking sneaker. I mean, it's wild looking for sure, but it's not an ugly shoe. So Second Street had this pair of Nike SB Dunk Highs listed for $99, which I wasn't sure if that was a good price or a bad price because like I said a couple years ago, back when the shoe first came out, I think it was going for around there at least, used. So I looked it up on eBay. Turns out this shoe sells for around $135, which means that we do have a potential profit of like $36, which I thought was worth it, especially for a pair of SB Dunks that are as cool as this. All right, so this is a shoe that I love. I absolutely love. I actually have a pair myself, size nine, my size too. If I didn't have these, I'd grab them. Flu game 12s for 229. Really clean. Good price too. Looks like we got some brand new Jordan 1s, some Laney's for 179. Not bad. Back here they got some stuff too. They got the uh, foams right here in blue. You've got the French blue 12s. Wow, for 249. I actually have this colorway. I got it from the Nike store, but my pair came with like glue stains all over it. Wow, that's clean. Are these? That's probably like exactly what they go for. Let me check. LOL MVM. <laughs> Gonna leave those. Yo, we cashed out today. 
That's ridiculous. So I feel like I'm on a roll, and I don't want to stop going to thrift stores because I've found so many great shoes at the places we've already been. So I want to head down to South Street, Philadelphia, and see what else they have. And the first place that I stop is this place called Philly Aids Thrift. It's crazy because I think back in college, I actually worked like eight hours at Philly Aids Thrift for like some volunteer project that I was doing. I think, I mean, it was 2010, so I don't, I'm pretty sure it was Philly Aids Thrift. Either way, I've got to say that this is one of the wildest thrift stores I've ever seen in my entire life. They have everything. It's crazy, it's overwhelming. There's lights and there's sounds and there's like displays and standees and all sorts of stuff that you just never see all together in one place. I felt like I was in someone's collectible garage. It was crazy. This is wild. Got a bunch of women's shoes. I know the men's shoes used to be here. I actually don't know where the men's shoes are now. Maybe this is it. I'm not sure. This might be it. This place is huge. There's some men's shoes. They got some Air Forces over there, but that looks like it's about it. Some Reeboks. Man. All right, so although I didn't find anything at Philly Aids Thrift, I think it's called, I've been there a bunch, and I found sneakers before, but uh, nothing today. I will say, though, that it is probably the coolest thrift store I've ever been to. It's nuts. Unfortunately, no sneakers to be found. Maybe they were somewhere else. I thought I walked through the entire place, but there's like so many different turns and doors and places you just don't even know are there that it's possible I completely missed them. And at this point, I'm a little discouraged because I feel like my day is over. I feel like I've hit all the different thrift stores in the area, but I do remember one place, and that's actually a brand new 2nd Street that opened up, I think, six months ago on South Street. Now, I've been to the 2nd Street one time before, and last time I was there, I wasn't sure if they were cool with me filming because they were all kind of looking at me. <laughs> so it was like really awkward. Uh, so I, I've kind of been not going back for that exact reason. But I felt like, you know what? We're on a roll, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Hold up, I got a size 10 of these for 229? No way. This might actually be a pickup, that's crazy. Yo. So this is a pair of Yeezys that is so far off of any other pair of shoes that Kanye West has ever dropped that it just almost doesn't even make sense. It's kind of like the mix between a foam runner and like a winter boot. It's called the insulated boot, except it's spelled out in letters, so like N-S-L-T, I don't, I don't know the lettering. Um, but either way, wild looking shoe, and what's interesting about it is that it actually resells for like $400 to $800, depending on size and condition. At first glance, this shoe looks immaculate, and for the price that I'm seeing it for, I think it's worth it. But $229 is a decent amount of money for a pair of used shoes, especially because that's about how much I paid at Buffalo Exchange for all the sneakers that I grabbed. So uh, I'm gonna take a couple seconds and think about it. So they've got so much good stuff at the Second Street. They've got these Hyper Royal Ones for $199 in a size eight. They've got this size nine Air Jordan One. I forget what the name of these are. Deconstructed or something like that. They've got the uh, the Barbershop Dunks. What size? Size nine, one twenty-nine. So not a bad price. And they also have these. The undefeated, not the undefeated. The um. Oh my gosh, Union LA, Union LA fours. That's crazy, good price too. That's a really good price for these. I might have to do it. I legit might have to do it. We'll see, they're huge though. So I come back to look at the insulated boots because in my head I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do it. I think I could resell these for like $300. I'm gonna go for it. $300 on the low end. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm hoping for more like $400. But as I'm looking over the shoe another time, I realize that there's a stain on the toe. Now, a lot of times I'll buy a pair of shoes, bring them home, and I'll realize, oh crap, there's a problem with it. I didn't even notice. With this shoe, luckily enough, I realized that the stain was there before I pulled the $229 trigger. Now, I don't know if it was just me mentally trying to get out of spending $229 on a pair of shoes that I wasn't gonna wear and possibly even make money on, or what it was, but that stain really bothered me because I don't think it would be that easy to get out without either staining the shoe more or uh, it just not coming out at all. So I decided against it. If it was like $100, I absolutely would have done it. Of course, for $100, I think anyone would have done it, but um, it's just not worth the risk for me. So I'm gonna leave it. I've got these guys, the Jordan 1. Shoot, I don't know what, I don't know what they're called. The Hyper Summers or, shoot, I don't remember. I don't know any of the names of sneakers anymore for some reason. They've got these Heritage ones for 109, which is not bad. They've got these nice mids for 179. So much good stuff here, it's crazy. For good prices too. Like, what are these? Look at these SB Dunks. For how much? 79 it looks like. Okay, let's check these guys out. Probably could. 
do something with these. So as I'm walking around 2nd Street, I notice another pair of Nike SB Dunk Highs sitting on the shelf. And as I pull it out, it looks like it's a good size. It's a size 9, which is my size, which means it's a great size. And uh, it's actually the Spectrum SBs from 2020. Now what's cool about this shoe is that it's actually got this fully mismatched suede upper. So each panel is a different color from the other side of the pair. So like on the left shoe, the midfoot panel is sort of a white creamish color. On the right shoe, it's sort of a rust red color. And every panel is a different variation of some color. So it's a really cool, almost like a what the looking sneaker. So I decided to look them up on eBay and it looks like they're selling for around $135, which means we have a potential $55 profit. So for me, that's a absolute green light. I'm gonna go for it. And hey, you know what? I'm glad that I did. I think it's a very clean looking pair of shoes. It's my size. I could keep it if I want to. I don't think I will, but uh, still a good pickup. We got so much good stuff here. It's hard to like, <laughs> choose what to look at first. We got Panda Dunks for how much? 179, not bad. I didn't even see these before. You've got the, uh, the white 11s right here. The Legend Blues for 109, size nine. That's actually not a bad price. A little, a little yellowed. It's not gonna grab them, but still not a bad price. Got some Cardinal 7s for 179, not bad. Infrared 6s for 69, that's definitely not bad. Some Dunks, 179. A lot of really good stuff, like UNC 6s, 129. Yo, they got 750 size nine and a half for 599. More than I want to pay, but wow, that's crazy to see. So I actually had this colorway back in the day. I actually hit on them and they just confirmed that. And I sold it, I regret it, but cool to see, just not for that price. Okay, we got some black cement threes for 199, size eight and a half. Really good condition. Yo, I might actually grab these too. That's crazy. Is that a good price? I don't know. I don't know what these go for right now. Let me check. So that actually seems like exactly what they're going for. So I'm gonna leave it. If it was my size though, if it was a size nine, definitely grab, definitely double up. But for that price, probably good on those. Got some Wave Runners right here for 149 for a size eight. That seems like a really good price. Now they look a little dirty. So they are definitely worn. Yeah, this needs to be re-dyed. Okay, I'm gonna leave these. But man, the selection here is crazy. If you're willing to wear some stuff that like has a little bit of dirt, you can get it for like crazy good prices. That's nuts. So I decided to round the day off there because I feel like we grabbed so many great pairs of sneakers today and even though we only grabbed one pair at this second street, it was still a pretty good pickup. All right, so we found a lot of really great sneakers today. A lot more pairs than I was expecting. Usually when I go out thrifting, I don't find anywhere close to as many pairs as I did today. I wish this had happened during the $20 sneaker collection, which will restart soon. Be patient because I'm still trying to work out some of the kinks for that. But uh, a lot of great pickups today. And as promised at the beginning of the video, I'm gonna tell you guys how much money we potentially could make off of all these sneakers that we grabbed. So here it is, the potential profit off of these six pairs of sneakers is $224, which is not bad. And sure, I mean, it's possible we don't make that much because of fees or maybe the pairs don't sell for as much as we thought. It's also possible that we might make more. But either way, in my opinion, a very successful thrifting trip. And with that, we pretty much round off the video for today. So thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.